Thank you, Lord. I was surprised and unprepared a little bit to go hunt in the Alps. Gosh, those are those are ibex horns. This is literally one of the gateways into the Roman Empire, still standing. You're, you're just a piece of debris in that thing. How beautiful was that? My name's Colorado. I've been hunting my whole life, guiding, outfitting, and hunting. Where in the world? 30 years now, I've made my living outdoors. Somewhere in the outback. We're in Mongolia. Hello, Argentina. Right on the El Bicho. Red Square, Moscow, Russia. Howdy, Colorado. Back. Welcome to New Zealand. Where you know, in the world? I just love it so much. I'm going to keep on loving it if it don't kill me. If I had it my way, I'd take the whole world home. Where in the world are we this week? We're in the country of Italy, and we're here on a hunt with the one and only outfitter for big game in the whole country, Italian safaris. Even though Italy has a vast, vast history of hunting, I'm in front of the castle Stupingini, one of the king's most important castles. The original king, Vittorio Emanuele II, was a huge hunter himself. One of his castles was just a castle for hunting, and we're gonna walk you through that. Behind me, on top of this castle, you can see the big red stag. So through the history of hunting in all of Italy, we're down to one big game outfitter. I'm gonna introduce you to Leone Rossi. There's so much here to take in from the history, the heritage, the wineries, the sightseeing. It's a trip, an adventure anyone would enjoy. Plus we're going hunting for Alpine chamois in the Alps with Italian safaris. It's a trip that I know has never been filmed. It's never been, there's never been a show, a show done. There's never been an airing of a big game hunt in Italy. I've asked around, I asked the outfitter. Nobody knows of a show that's been filmed over here. What a great opportunity. Plus, it's a place I haven't been. I'm gonna go hunt Italy for big game. You couldn't ask for more. We decided we're gonna go to the northern part of Italy and hunt for chamois. That shouldn't be no big deal, right? I mean, I've hunted all over the world. Valle d'Aosta is the region northwest of Italy. Uh, it hosts the highest mountain in the whole continent, Monte Bianco, Monte Rosa, Cervino, all of them. And we will be hunting five kilometers from France. We will be looking in the other direction and we will have Switzerland there. It's, it's the Alps. When you mention the Alps, you think of Switzerland, right? That's, that's the Swiss Alps, and that's what everybody talks about. But the Alps run into several different countries. So I, I, was, I was surprised and unprepared a little bit to go hunt in the Alps. Well, we just stopped in uh, this, a city. The city is before we go up the, um, the, uh, the canyon that's where hunting camp is, which is quite a ways, but we're sitting here gonna get something to eat and a few last things. So we're gonna be hunting in the Alps, right in between Switzerland and, and France. And as steep as these mountains look, I think I'm gonna eat a lot in case I don't make it back. <laughs> Climb these things. While going around in Italy, you have uh, a lot of very ancient cities dating back to the Roman Empire. Even in Valle d'Aosta, in the middle of the highest mountains in the continent, you can find Roman ruins. And what we saw is uh, the door, the entrance door to Aosta city and the ancient uh, Aosta Roman city. Then we go and walk through the gateway of Rome. This is all in the same place. This is literally one of the gateways into the Roman Empire, still standing. You can see the wall. You can see everything that hundreds and hundreds of years ago, that this is, this is what it's about and this is where it happened. 
all of that. We ain't even got to our chamois hunt yet. This is, this is on the way. Italy has a rich hunting history. We get to go to the King's Hunting Castle. We're at the King's Castle, commonly called here as the Hunting Castle, because the, the, the king that actually is responsible for Italy was a hunter. The 18th century, then the rest of this was built around the, the tower that was built in the years 1000 to, to 1100. The right one there. in Switzerland? Is it that one right there, yeah. Okay. And we will be going in this okay. valley here. This one. Yeah, we was living up here. Okay. And here is France. And this is France. Yeah. Just old historical drawings of of hunts, hound hunts with bears, it looks like, fox hunts. And then when you see when you see the, the bears, you see the more of the, the shorter ear. And then when you see the foxes, you see the more whippet or greyhound looking dogs. Italy was carved out of Austria. Is that uh, the deal? No, Empire? no, it was in a lot of different, very small countries. Uh, Italy was. Italy was. So let's say the original, the heart from from where they, they left to compass the whole country was basically Torino. So in the 1800s, this this was the king's room. This is where he slept. This was his personal room, and it's been preserved. That's all of his stuff. Here he was coming here to sleep, but just in order to get to the mountains and hunt. So yeah, he to come here really and stay not here. Staying a lot here, he, this is, was really the, the place to go through. This ain't like even this. real. Oh my gosh, those are those are ibex horns. Oh my gosh, unbelievable! Oh wow, man! Oh man! So the entire interior decor is made up of ibex horns. This is where you just kind of, man, oh man. 1,800 ibex and chamois. My God, God, it's just ain't even real. See, look, these are females. Yeah, just, oh yeah, it's these smaller ones. We're gonna leave here, go to camp, and we're gonna camp in an area where, where they camped, where this king camped and hunted. And we're gonna hunt by where he did back in the 1800s, where it all started. Oh my goodness. This next room's even more incredible. 1,800 Ibex and Chamois. <laughs> hey goodness. Holy smoke, this don't even look real. I never even heard of anything like this before. This is an example of the history of hunting, the heritage, and how far back it goes. It goes back to the beginning. The be beginning of us, the beginning of countries, the beginning of, of the heritage. Many, many countries, many people, families, the history and heritage of them is hunting camps and hunting trips. <laughs> Here's probably the grandest example I've ever seen of that. <laughs> Without this king, there is no Italy. And to walk through his hunting castle, he's got many castles, but this is his hunting castle. There's 1,800 mounts. I thought I had a nice trophy room. I don't have, <laughs> I don't have a trophy room like this man did. You can literally get to the top of most of this country via a road. You still gotta break away and go hiking the snow and, and, and get up the mountains and get in where you can hunt the alpine chamois, which is the mainstay of what they hunt. Great, great place to do that in. And one that very, very few has ever done is hunt Italy for the alpine chamois. And, and this is what this opportunity is all about. So you get up there and realize how special of a place, how special of a place are you? You look in front of you and there's France, the Alps in, in France. You're in Italy, and if you turn around and look behind you, 
there's this there's Switzerland there's the Swiss Alps we stay at our family retreat uh, where I hunt where my father hunted before me and when where my grandfather hunted before my father we hunt there um, my family hunt there since more than 100 years our hunting area is bordering what now is the greatest national park in Italy and before it being a national park it was the, fo the hunting ground of the former royal family you know this just makes you more nervous than too much coffee okay when your guide comes out and this is what he's carrying oh yes we just go up the mountain <laughs> what is oh this is scary. what'd you bring that out for go I want to check my rifle before we go anywhere. I mean, this is the Alps, right? A flat spot is, a, is the rarest thing you've ever seen over here, okay? There ain't no such thing as no flat spot. So we rig up to shoot, and the, the, it's, it's only about 130 yards. So I get my rifle rigged up, and I'm shooting to check it. Now, I'm two and a half inches high at 100. So I adjust it, we're good to go. I, I'm literally, I'm getting up. We're, I'm rigging down, so we're gonna go hiked the mountain, go hunting, and, and one of the guys, I think it was Lucas, said, Chammy, they call it Tammy, 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 he goes, I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to <laughs> go, Tammy. He said, no, there's the Tammy. And unbelievable, there's a pretty steep embankment. I finally, I seen out of the corner of my eye, there's a chamois running up the mountain. I'm like, what's, he goes, I don't know, he was sleeping there and he run from the sky. <laughs> he goes, true, true, is a big, I'm like, okay, well, um, like I told you, I'm pointing downhill and this chamois running up this hill on this other side and he finally slows down, he's going across. There, I have no rest, I'm literally, picture to picture, I'm down like this and I have to hold my gun up like this. So I'm not in, of course everybody's excited, shoot, shoot, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> hang on. And I finally, I said, should I shoot? And they're like, yeah, yeah, big male. I'm like, oh God, okay. I'm, I'm wiggling around here and I shot. Let me stop. And as soon as I shot, I knew it wasn't right. And, and the bullet went high. I shot, I shot over him. And then he decided he didn't want to talk to Colorado Buck no more. So he decides to leave. And I got a chance for another shot. I'm in the same position. I'm like, no, I, I know better than this. I knew better than the first time, but I, but I shot it and I shouldn't have. And I literally was sick at my stomach. I was like, what up, my dog? This was a gift from the Lord. I believe it. it was over. I'm like, oh, Lord, I'm sorry. How did I mess this up? You give me a gift like this. So next thing I know, we're up in the mountains, and we're, we are, I mean, you pick one foot up, you put it in snow, and you put it down, it's right in front of the foot that you're standing on. I mean, that's what we're doing. And every step you're going, boy, I had one at a couple hundred or so yards, and I did, oh, my gosh. And finally, I'm like, all right, get over it. Get your head clear. Go, just focus your hunt and go hunt. Well, this is probably the best period of the year to hunt the chamois. In this period of the year, we are getting into the heart of the mating season and especially it's probably the best time to spot very old animals because during the let's say the rest of the year they stay in very steep and hard places to go and they're very hard to spot also because of the snow because in this period again the chamois are dark you hunt them with the snow it's when the mountains really are the best and the chamois are the best the gamekeeper are the ones leaving the whole year up into the hunting area they take care of the animals, they take care of the land. And once we go on a hunt, we always have them with us because safety, again. Being in high mountains with high snow might be dangerous. You always want to have somebody extremely expert of the mountain you are in to know you're always in the safest, safest possible situation. So we get into some more chamois. 
and we blow stock and blow stock. It's easy, dude. It's, everything's white. We're moving around. I mean, they can see you for forever. It's difficult to sneak up on something in snow white, and you know you're moving, and this it's it's just it's not easy. There's these avalanches, these snow avalanches, and, and when you look up, they don't look all that big. It just grows and grows and grows. You're like, if you if you was anywhere near that, you're, you're just a piece of debris in that thing. I finally see one of the one of the chamois that we that we'd spooked, and it's right at the beginning of the rut. I watch him come all the way down the mountain, get on a, get on a rim rock. And then he decides to turn and come our way. I'm like, Lord, I'll get another chance here. If he turns and he goes back, he's gone. If he comes our way, he's gonna meet some Norma ammunition. This is what's gonna happen, right? We see the chamois come across them cliffs. And they come across those cliffs, come across those cliffs, and he fell into that little cut. And he never came back out, so we're pretty sure He's bedded, he's bedded right He's been there a long time. And we're still a long ways if he gets up and goes back the way that he came. And if we can close this distance here between here and there any, then if he does go that way, it's gonna help us some. Still gonna be a long shot no matter what. It's getting later and later. We're, something needs to happen. We've got to bail and go out and come back tomorrow or, or something. All of a sudden, one of those avalanches that I'm telling you about, I look up and I'm going, it's going to check. I get my rifle ready. It's going to run him out. It's going right down this crevice and he blows out of there. I, I, don't, I don't see me. He covers a pretty good, like hundreds of yards. And he, he stopped this last ridge when he goes over this ridge he is gone and he stopped there just a second and i might have said a prayer or something <laughs> i got to pow lord please help this bullet get where it's supposed to go <laughs> and it was perfect that was a long shot <laughs> yeah <laughs> Shot. Man! That was a shot. Woo! How about that, buddy? Congratulations. <laughs> ben, Woo! Baby! Very, very nice I see him. Oh, thank you, Lord. It was the very, very, La very chance. last chance. Last chance. Great. Look how far it's. Look at him later. Oh! Great shot. Look at this. Oh! Oh, my God. That. There's another Norma knockdown from across the world. Can you believe that? What a, ah! I couldn't be more happy. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. How beautiful was that? Was that good? That, that was, was good. That was, that was a good one. <laughs> good job. Thank you, sir. Yeah, Thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> Colorado wanted to go and pick up his chamois. I said, no, that's too dangerous. This is what we always take care. We had to go, just the two of us, me and the gamekeeper. That was too dangerous for him and we will never allow one of our guests to take these kind of risks. If you love to travel and hunt, you're gonna to wanna to come to Italy, experience it, see it, hunt the Alps, and guess what? This is your connection to Italy. And if you love to travel and hunt, this is gonna be one of the destinations you got to go to. I hope that you enjoyed this, this show. I definitely enjoyed bringing it to you. Until next week, thanks for joining us and catch us somewhere else in the world for a brand new one. God bless you and good hunting. Getting the thing, getting it started. And the mountain's getting bigger and bigger every step I take.